Hello everyone, I'm Jeremy Jones with the Billiard Network bringing you this match sponsored by Q-Tech. This is a semifinal match from the 2021 European Championships. It's the eight ball division between Josh Filler now breaking in game one against Federer Gorf. You can see a head on break making two balls I believe on the break for Josh and a very open table. Now you can see quickly, I think, both sides, the stripes and the solids, very doable. So a lot of times you'll start with one of the easier shots. It looks like the stripes are pretty grouped together, so he'll go back and get the nine. And then just kind of contend with this at end of the table. Josh, a very good A-ball player, saw him play it to make it happen. Uh, a few years ago, before pandemic, it was a eight ball straight pool and ten ball, I believe, division. Uh, the three and Josh uh, put on quite a performance in all three divisions. And got a little awkward here. Go between these, I'm not sure. Okay, could get by, no problem. Now the 13, I believe, does play up in the corner or the side. I think he just plays for the corner. Oh, he, he could move the ball easily. I thought he was a little more straight. It's going to be a pretty easy clearance in game number one for Josh Filler. See a nice crowd on hand. Game two is alternate break format. Holding the cue ball nicely, and again, another nice spread. A little bit more work, you can see just uh, one cluster there with the one and 15, is it? Our first look at Fetter Gorst. Better won't get around the table as quickly as Josh, but just as efficiently, that's for sure. Stripes have a little funny ball there between the three and the eight. So you may see him look a little more solid, He's trying to fall behind the one right now. He could go into the one. That's the thing. That's the better shot, usually, especially with a bunch of other options, is go into the balls. Don't try to get short side in that, that, that manner, especially when a lot of balls are, or one end of the table is very open at the top end. When you try short side, sometimes it's necessary, but when you don't get there, you're kind of going to have to pick off another ball that could be a kind of a leader towards another problem. Now Fetter in a great position, just needs to draw back, play the five, three, seven, eight, probably. After the one. Could have maybe used another inch off the rail just to make this shot pretty foolproof. Don't feel a problem coming with Fetter though. gotten really nice on this where he can pull above the seven easily and probably play the short pocket on the eight. Last three balls in that same lower right hand corner to tie or score at one apiece. Uh, may, we'll see. Not sure what angle if any he's falling on. Looks like he can stun over. And this is a title of course all Europeans are trying to get but the eight ball division is something special a lot of these players are kind of raised and trained playing eight ball early in their pool careers and Josh took a little speed off there didn't see one down 
So our first dry break of the match. And of course, without balls being made on the break, definitely more work. But you can see the stripes are very doable. You want to get on that lonely stripe at the top end of the table as quick as possible. So he's going to do that now. An eight ball is a, a very popular game on many kinds of tables. The nine foot table, of course, the European Championships or any pro event you would consider would be on the nine footers. It's a very popular game on the seven footers. That was way light there. That's very uh, unusual for Federer. He, uh, we all miss our mark, but he missed it by some 18 inches or so there to make things easy with the 11 in the side. <laughs> Got to shoot a long shot now. No reason to take a gamble on the 11. It goes in the corner where he's standing, unless he's going to play it by the nine right now. But Okay, he's going to take on the long shot. That's the thing about eight ball. You don't have to panic, especially early in the rack. Now you start thinking about the eight and how quickly you want to get to the 11. I'd like to get to it decently quick. So unless the eight goes easily by the three, don't think I want to use the 11 last, but it goes easily by the three. That That's not bad. I'd probably play the nine next and go ahead and play the 11 last. You've gotten in that position now to where that makes sense. Because you can come one rail between. He's going to draw between the seven five. I thought he may follow forward more and come between the eight five with the cue ball here. Evidently, he, he wanted the minimal tra travel and just draw this ball. Just don't under hit it. Don't get over the five with the cue ball. And that's what I would have been a little worried about. He still should be okay. But that's again why I thought I may have gotten on the angle on the nine to roll between the eight and five. And then you're always going to be above the 11. Now he's got to kind of draw the cue ball over. type of ball you can rattle but get that sweet nice aggressive stroke and for his first lead in the match at 2-1 and he will be breaking in game four and he didn't take any speed off and he's made two and the balls are pretty open again. I think the solids with that little cluster does does go and it doesn't really pose much of a problem. So you may see, you see like the five to six up long. Yeah, the, I like the solids. But the stripes are very playable as well. Not really a problem. The thing is that you can shoot the seven and the two up long. I'm not saying you want to do that necessarily, but with that side rail so open, I don't think the solids are really something to worry about. Now he's going to take care of it early, and that's smart. Just in case he doesn't like it, he can kind of work the cue ball off the seven now and leave the two later. Just kind of how you want to play it. Balls are so open traveling, the cue ball's not too much of a worry. And he got on the two nice. So now it'll be the two to the six, most likely. To the pink, four last, and then the eight. No reason to take a long shot now. If he wants to come out and use the six last, he can. But I think one rail for the four is okay. I mean, excuse me, for the six is okay. But he wanted to play the six last. So he'll just have to work the cue ball a little bit more 
from the 6 to the 8. He's in such a prime position on the 4, though. Shouldn't be, shouldn't be much of a worry. you got to anticipate a close match being brought to you from the beer network. Synergy 10.5, all kinds of ways you can use that shaft. And that's also, again, brought to you by Q Tech and the Bigger Network. Now, Josh didn't lay off those. He did make one, I believe. Thought he did. And he made one. A lot more of a cluster, a little bit more of a worry. It's going to take the solids. I guess the one goes easily, maybe. Going to drop on the six. I don't know if you got really ideal here. Got an angle, but not much. Now, if the one's not cuttable, did he get cut off? spot and he'll I would size up the two ball you can shoot the two seven and come on rail across if you can draw back to straight on the seven you can follow down for the one and Josh very good at stunning the ball maybe one of the best ever uses the light stun a lot so it'll come one rail between the 11 and 8 It's one of the heavier stun shots you'll see from Josh. And now to cut the lead to 3 2. Better course to break in game number six. That's a little off. I don't know if he's going to make one. Quickly, Josh Filler up to the table. Got a funny one here. Kind of shot on both the stripes and the solids with the one and the nine, some others as well. He's going to look at the solids. Five, six, two, three, so close together. The five could be a little bit of a worry, but with so many choices there, you got to figure you're going to you're going to find a decent way to get at it. I don't know if you can. The five goes cleanly. I'm going to use the six in the side. But it looks like he's going to play the three. Yeah, I don't know. May have shot that and dropped for the six in the side to get on the five, but either way is fine. Seven is okay because you have a pink four that you can get at pretty easily. I think he wanted to take a chance of getting on the five right then, end up a little bit short. So the eight's got choices. I'd probably shoot, draw back, and have to cut the five after the six. Is he going after the five now? No. Yeah, I think you got to shoot the five now. Unless he's going to cut the two and then play the five last. I don't, yeah, I would have to shoot the five now with. So many options. Just make sure you follow out. Yeah, exactly. I still got some worry here. It would help him tremendously if the seven went in the upper right corner, but it, I'm not sure it does. 
be a lot easier to use the four to get on the eight. And that, that tells us it definitely does play in the corner. It's going to help him just go a little forward off the seven and then the pink four in the side and the eight in the lower right corner. You can see the pocket's not too tight, so the way the guys are breaking and obviously playing, you're going to see a lot of clearances from the break or a dry break. And the tie to score at three apiece. And Josh Filler now breaking back in the driver's seat. He's going to hit a ball in the corner. Ball spreading open nicely. It because he's got a little cluster at the top, which isn't that big of a deal with other stripes around it. It's the 11 ball he wants to get on, and then the 9's nothing nice either. No, that's not secured. 7's kind of ugly. First shot on the solids, unless you shoot the 3. You know, it's kind of dicey because the cue ball's going to have some movement. Can he get at the pink 4? I wonder if that helps him at all. Really, could use the five to get into the seven and all that, but easy to not come away with a shot. Then you're in pretty big trouble. Yes, okay, he's gonna play for the strike. This is a big commitment. Especially if he's going into balls on the first shot. I couldn't imagine that. Got there. And he's going to hate it. It's in big trouble, that's what. Man, it's just going to turn out. And he fouled. He fouled there, ball in hand. Now, the first shot, that's what I was saying, was a big commitment with the stripes, especially if you're going downward into the balls. Kind of felt like the solids, you know, if, if he could use the pink four just to get started, even if he had to waste the two, he could figure out a way to play off the five to get in a handy position to open that seven later. And the first couple shots would have been a little more secure, but hard to fault Josh Filler when he's at the table and playing great semifinals. And he's a great eight ball player. I've watched him play many of matches. I think you would have rather gotten a little straighter here to play easily for the pink four, but I don't think it's a problem. Just has to hit the seven a bit lighter. I'd like to get, I think, close to the two ball. He's going to wait on the two. I thought he'd roll forward and just draw back off the two to the five six. And He's going to take care of the six first and then try and draw off the two. But some choices there. I like the two balls together a little bit, especially he was so good on the pink four to roll forward and get nice and close to the two, it appeared. But again, Fetter Gorse is at the table, so these guys see the angles better than you know all of us watching. Of course, now he's in a great spot. Capture a lead at four to three. Better course with the eight in the lower right. And here you have it again from Q Tech, who brought you this match along with the bigger network, the Synergy Shaft. First carbon fiber with the first World Championship, and now with the first with two. 
better course than Shane Van Boney. Seems like this happens a lot as the matches go on. Especially eight ball, it seems like a lot. The balls aren't breaking quite as good as they did at the beginning of the match. He's looking at the stripes. That's a real big commitment as well. The one's covered up pretty well, of course. But Seems like to me you could do something to crash into the one taking a chance and opening. Maybe, I don't know, shoot the three, take a thin angle on the five to go into the one. Maybe having the six two, you could produce a shot on the one as well. The ten kind of bothers me and how thin and hot the cue ball is going to be here off the nine. Now, if he can go into the one with the cue ball off the nine, that would help a lot. And that would make a lot of sense. And you can see him hitting a lot of left English here. We're trying to nip the one on the way out. And he caught it thick to the pocket. That was all because the cue ball really wanted to make sure he got into the one. And probably got into it thicker than he anticipated. So i tell you, just maybe a little more squirt on the ball than he wanted. Now, Josh has got, of course, a couple easy ones here on this end of the table, but he's got to be tidy with the cue ball coming down. He's going to go ahead and try and take care of that now, which is smart. I don't know if he can bump the 8 open easily in a way to where the 11 and 14 are. It right, looks like no problem. Yeah. Where they're really easy. You play this, then the 11, then the 15 last. A little upset that he fell a little awkwardly straight here. But it looks like to me he can maybe he's falling forward. Just got a pinch it out here. Right, let's go, I guess. Main thing he didn't want to happen there is bump the eleven just a little bit, making it to where the seven had him covered up. Looks like Filler's going to take advantage like he usually does after a mistake from his opponent. And Joshua Filler. Another pretty routine eight ball to tire match at four games apiece. Filler back to breaking. Oof, the four hit the side pocket pretty nicely, but did not fall. I think another dry break, so see it a lot. The table starts breaking tougher as the matches, especially in the big matches. It's a semifinal. Solids are very playable to me. And probably pick off the seven. I don't know. Next, maybe not. We'll see. It go. It goes in the other. Goes in the corner where the 12's at. I think he wanted to get on the two ball a little bit there, really, but a little better, anyways. Not saying it'll keep him from shooting it. Makes sense to shoot it. Something like the two, five, one, three, seven, four, something like that. That may get adjusted, but no reason to leave the five over there, I don't think, anyways. You can. I'd probably pick the five off now. Because it's really natural to get on the three to the seven more than, even though the five's closer, it's a little more natural playing off the three, I think. Don't really have to shoot the ball much. You just kind of. This is okay too, just to play the five to the seven. But I may have picked the five off there first. 
and then it had been 374 instead of 3574. But with such a clear, open part of the center of the table. But you see, he just has to shoot this ball a little more. You see the shot he just shot on the three? That got him perfect onto the seven. So now he's got to dig into the cue ball a little bit on the five. Not saying it's a problem, but he just kind of shot the shot I was thinking of. And now leaving the pink four last for the eight. And to start the match, it looked like, you know, the lag, of course, it, it is huge. And it did start off with a break and run and then a return from Fetter Gorst. But it looked like it was going to be a very aggressive match to start. But now Fetter Gorst out to a 5-4 lead. And another look at our sponsor of this match, Q-Tech, the Ghost Edition. Number one selling Q ever from Q-Tech. Nicely perfect timing, it looked like. Got the ball on the side. Sizing up the one. One's not too much of a problem. He doesn't have a great shot at the stripe, and you certainly don't want to take on, you know, a missable ball when. You know, someone like Fetter can just kind of work his way through this rack, I think. He can use the pink four. I don't think he's too good to get on the six to open the one. And maybe the one doesn't even need opened. Appears it does, though. I'm just going to play the one. And the ref right on it. Probably use a little bit the side of the pocket. Oh, yeah. No, he didn't come away with anything great besides the three. Well, maybe he has the five as well. light with the cue ball there should be okay really no bad place to go as long as you know don't let up on it too much you can draw between and have the six you can bump the six three for last before the eight probably gets above it a little just a little bit no reason to get really thin with the you know open side pocket for the black yeah that's pretty ideal I think Now to a two game lead at six to four. Joshua Filler needs a good break here. He's had a couple dry breaks already. And I don't see anything yet. Maybe I missed one, but looked like a dry break to me. Solids look pretty nice if he can get a you know, long starter down on the three or the seven. Don't really think he has anything else that's too shootable, but he could easily get behind the four and five with them close together underneath him. You can play from a few different positions there, so it's all about the starter. I think he's looking at the seven to run the ball a little bit. But 
elevated. So he's digging, so that tells me the three ball. Shot there. And he doesn't have to shoot the pink if he doesn't want to. The seven you can draw behind the four and five, and when they're grouped together, very easy to have a nice choice. So I would look at the two now. How much can I hold for the six or the one to use and get on the seven? I would consider it anyways. I, I don't want to make a mistake with the with the pink four. You know, if I could easily go by and guarantee position somewhere, that's one thing. But I'm near the rail. I think this is the right play, the two ball. Oh, but a miss. Look at this, dude. I left him a cut in the side. Maybe the 14 passes the two. That would help Josh tremendously. He could break open the 11 and 10 then. So he's going to look at that 14. And he's close. I mean, when he's long distance, he's accurate. But when he's close, like all the greats become even better. Concerned still with the nine and the thirteen, and looking at that now, he's overhit this a bit, so he's going to have to make a shot off the end rail here, floating this in the side. And he needs to get into it a little bit, get a little separation with the nine. Not sure of the angle. If he's cutting the nine much, the next shot could be a little awkward as well. Nice shot there. Use the heavy side of the pocket. Now he's going to have a good speed if he's dropping on the 11. That's what I was talking about. The speed's going to be good. I think he's got there, but it's close. just enough to have an angle to drop on the 8. We'll see if he draws all the way back down for the side, maybe. Josh will usually just take the corner. He's coming down. Watch out. This could be a problem. Oof. Like I said, he would normally just lay up over there and take the little cut in the corner. Not much of a cut at all, but looks like he's going to get through this tough rack. After a rare miss from Feder Gorst. Now another look at our sponsor of this match, QTech, their propel. It's incredible. That jump Q has made uh, wonders in my jump. My jump uh, prowess. There's much of, but it definitely has improved. Now Feder with a one game lead at six to five. Had a chance to Put a little bit of a stranglehold on this match, but now only a one game lead, but did make a ball. Doesn't have the best shot at a solid. That's the issue here. I'd much rather take those solids and not have a problem with maybe a cluster, but maybe that 14 is wired, that combination. Definitely makes it look playable. Still not something you want to wait on unless you're really convinced of, you know, the object ball that you play the combination with is is going to be playable easily for shape. It's got an angle on both the eleven and the nine. Oh, 
Смотрим, было клана пока. Looks like it's uh, where he can hold position for that ball. That's what he'd like to do. I think he'll still come out for that nine last. I would. Gotten a little elevated here. Don't think that I don't know if the two goes between the three and the excuse me, the eight goes between the three and the two in the side. Definitely goes in the upper corner. They gotten a little too elevated to follow his cue ball one row out, you know, for the short corner pocket by the seven on the eight. I'm not sure. Going for the extension now. Big point in the match here. Is he digging on the cue ball? Very nice control there and had that little bit of an angle. Better Gorse to get that two game lead again. There you have it. Another look at our sponsor of this match, and Feder Gorst. First to capture that world title, and first to have two now with two different players with the world title from one key company like that. And one of the carbon fiber shafts from Q-Tech, the Synergy. I think it was another dry break. So, I mean, you know, on paper, most would say Feder's going to have a little bit of an edge breaking the balls, nine ball, ten ball, eight balls similar to ten ball, you know, so mo over most players actually. But you don't expect uh, Josh to have three dry breaks, especially the way the table started off breaking. Very difficult and the most difficult layout we've seen so far in this match. Interesting, so taking the strikes, there must be something he really likes. And as far as getting at that 13 ball, and there's another problem with the stripe on the left side of the table. Well, no, the 14's pretty open. I think that ball kind of came off a little hot, hotter than he wanted. So he wants to be able to crash into those upper three balls, the 7, 13, and 10, is it? is he couldn't really come to the bottom rail unless he wrapped out of the corner which wouldn't have been bad but coming from underneath him you may not open your stripes at all and you may hit the seven away and run the cue ball so he wanted to come one row into these or maybe even draw behind him drawing behind him is not bad because you have two balls there to choose from so if he had the angle to draw off the 13 and go, take a chance get behind those two balls on that long rail uh, that may work can see there from the overhead that they both go to that, that corner pocket at the upper left part of your screen. Well, that wasn't bad, especially if he came away with a shot on the 14. If he didn't, he's in trouble. Jump cue on the 11. In my opinion, the best jumper in the world. Also uses the propel. And I think Fetter, what got him there, is just not, you know, kind of figuring he wasn't going to have much of a shot otherwise. Made a really nice breakout. 
I'm just going to take care of the six next. Open up the two ball. Just roll this in, have the three. Yeah, depending on the angle he has. I'm not sure if he'll take the five off next or not. Yeah, the angle will draw between the seven, you know, near the seven, and it's going to come between the 14 and the two, maybe. Getting on the seven next. Slide over. And he's kind of elevated on one, stretched on the other. Yeah, that's our shot there. Knowing he can just stop the cue ball on the two and have the eight in the side, a little cut shot. <coughs> well, Josh did better than a little cut shot at that two beautifully. Let's cut the lead to seven to six. Now, sponsor of this match, Q Tech with the Ghost Edition, the most, the highest selling Q ever from Q Tech. Shane Van Owning Edition. Fetter Gorst, big break off here at 7 6. Right, hit him nicely. Definitely made at least one. You all got kicked back a little bit. Ten doesn't go. This could be a funny rack. Because the solids look more doable, but if the ten does go. I think the stripes, they're both playable, but not much of a shot on a solid to start, I don't think. Worried about the 12. And try to move the one, that'll help a lot. Does he have much of a shot right here, though? One actually bumped, I think, the 13 open a little bit more. So if he has something to play here that's comfortable, I don't like his chances of getting out. But he's thin on the 12, he's super thin on the 14. I don't think he has a shot on the 15. He may have the 10. And, you know, and that may be tight to the pocket, so I like him taking the chance there early. It's funny how the cue ball gets in these positions where everything's uh, a little awkward, but I may have to take the 10 on now. Stroke trying to come back down table. He gets in the exact same spot. That's why I was wondering. He didn't want to ease it, especially to only a portion of the pocket. He was a little ways away from it. He would love to have used that stripe in the side. Uh, I believe that's the 15 uh, to get position on these last two balls before dropping down back on the 13. Now he's got to gamble a little bit. The five's a big ball here. Not only got to make a nice cut shot here on the 12, but he's got to be concerned where where's the cue ball going. Got another kiss, and he's going to get bumped to the back rail. So now he's looking not only at one shot on the 14, but I think the 13 does have both lower corner pockets, so that helps. But as he's to get by the one with the cue ball here, and maybe going into the one's not the worst thing. 
So really this is, I got to think, just straight high ball. A little medium stroke. I hit it light. Oh, nice shot. He's only going to have a portion of the pocket on the 13. He may not even shoot the 13, but I think he has to and go into the 3 with the cue ball. Maybe he can shoot the 15 in the upper corner and attack, trying to draw the ball back, but looks like to me it's got to be the 13 with a high ball. Josh Miller can just sit and wait. shot there. And there you have it. Third goal takes it down. Three to six. A great match by both players. Just some dry bake breaks. Got Josh. Thank you very much everyone from the Bayer Network, and of course this match sponsored by QTech. I'm Jeremy Jones, and see you soon.